This video will show you how to build a perpetual motion machine in Timberbone. First, what is a perpetual motion machine? It is a hydropower facility composed of channels, water wheels, and mechanical pumps that consumes only a small amount of water and generates infinite energy. We call it a perpetual motion machine because it seems to violate the law of conservation of energy. Second, why build it? A well-designed perpetual motion machine can generate electricity continuously and steadily, and it requires only a small amount of water and a few beavers to maintain. More importantly, as long as the scale is large enough, it can generate more power than any other power generation building of the same area. The first half of the video is the basics knowledge, conclusions about water physics, and things about water wheels and pumps. The second half is about the design of the perpetual motion machine, how to make it efficient, how to start it, and some considerations. The first is about the length. We define one meter as the width of a square. The ground height is the absolute height of the top surface of the soil block or levee. And the absolute water level is the absolute height of the water surface. The absolute water level minus ground height is the relative water level. Then is about time, for convenience. When we say one second, we mean one second in reality, at one x speed. For example, one day in game is 450 seconds, and every 100 seconds, the water level drops by 0.01 meters due to evaporation, or the evaporation rate of water is 0.045 meters per day. Flow is measured by the stream gauge, the unit of flow is cubic meters per second, or CMS. For water flow, one second in reality is half a second in the game, for example, a flow of 1 cms takes 2 seconds to fill up a single block with water. Each square of water will generate flow in four directions, front, back, left and right, and two adjacent squares share one flow on its common edge, so each square corresponds to a water level, and each edge corresponds to a flow. The water level displayed by the stream gauge is the absolute water height minus stream gauge bottom height, mean is zero, max is 3 meters. And the water current is the maximum of horizontal and vertical net outflow of this tile. The stream gauge can measure the flow even without touching the water surface. At 1x speed, these values are update every 0.3 seconds. For water to flow from one tile to another, the water level in this tile must be 0.1 meters greater than the ground height of the other tile. In all cases, for a tile, the total outflow is limited by the relative water level. To be precise, the total outflow is less than the relative water level divided by 0.15. In addition, the flow is limited to less than 2.2 cms when the ground height drops along the flow direction. When the ground height rises along the flow direction, it doesn't have this restriction. Change in water level over time is related to the difference between total inflow and total outflow. The change of flow over time is related to the difference in water level. However, it is very difficult to discuss dynamic water flow. Here we mainly describe the steady state. The steady state is the situation in which the water level and flow do not change. An area will eventually reach steady state when its total inflow is less than total outflow limit. If not, its water level will rise and overflow. Generally, the largest outflow restriction is on the edge of the ground height drop. For example, on a 9x9 platform filled with water source stones, the water level would keep rising.
There are four properties of water flow in steady state. First, for each tile, the total inflow is equal to the total outflow. Second, water will only flow to the same or lower water level. Third, the water level will be as low as possible within the limits mentioned above. Fourth, the final flow distribution is related to the process of steady state formation, but usually, the flow on the short path will be greater. 0.5 meters high floodgates or dams do not result in the 2.2 CMS flow restriction, but it will raise the water level to 0.65 meters. Note that floodgates higher than 1 meters have flow restriction. As water flows through the water wheel, the flow does not decrease, but the upstream water level rises. The height that the water level is raised is called the water wheel resistance. For the water wheel to work properly, the water level should be between the bottom of the water wheel and the top of the water wheel shaft. The power output of the water wheel is equal to the nominal output multiplied by the average of the lengthwise net outflow of the tile where the water wheel shaft is located. The resistance of the water wheel is equal to 0.01 times the distance the water flows longitudinally through the water wheel. So, for any kind of water wheel, the maximum resistance is 0.01 times the length of the water wheel, and the minimum resistance is 0.02 meters. The mechanical water pump consumes a maximum of 700 HP and produces a flow of 0.5 CMS. When the input power is less than 700 HP, the flow produced is proportional to the input. Only when the water level is more than 0.1 meters lower than the outlet of the mechanical pump, the pump can work normally.